Someone raise your hand and tell me, what do I give you before every test? Magic Teacher Fairy Dust! Okay, and what does Magic Teacher Fairy Dust help you do? Rosemary? Think. Think and do your best. I'm going to give you Magic Teacher Fairy Dust right now. Ready? Yay! Yay! Teaching is really like sales. I have to find a way to market my product in a way that the students want to buy it. And so I've always kind of thought that in the back of my mind is that if I don't sell the benefits and if I don't make it fun and make them want to grasp it, they're not going to buy it. I have two fourth grade classes and two fifth grade classes that come in for math. The lesson today is fraction subtraction with borrowing. And that's what is difficult to teach is how do you subtract fractions with borrowing. For some reason this is just a stinker. You know, in fifth grade, when they taught, just like you guys, when the teachers taught me fractions, it was like I couldn't get it. I really, really, really didn't understand. Talking to them about my own life, well, um, makes it okay if they're struggling. You remember how we've talked about our math wall? It's a bunch of blocks and bricks. But if something is missing and it's not strong and that brick is either gone or loose, then if we try to pile things on higher once we get older, into seventh grade or eighth grade, the wall's not gonna be very strong. I think math is important uh, to see how it relates to real life. And so I've come up with a story about uh, a pizza party. But all of a sudden I get a phone call from my mom. Hello, mom? And she says, um, you know, I'm kinda hungry. Um, can you bring me a half of a pizza home? So my mom wants a half a pizza. I have three, I need to take a half a pizza off, all right? Uh, I don't know how to do, oh yes I do. Can I cut up one of the pizzas? Yes. That's what I'm gonna do. And I think it's important, especially on, on math concepts that are difficult to understand, to actually start with the application and then show them how that works in a math problem in the algorithm. Okay, now can I give my mom her half a pizza? Yes. yes. Okay, there. Now I have a half a pizza for mom, right? Okay, so how many pizzas do I have left? Two and a half. Two and a half. Now let's look at what that really looks like in an algorithm. So they see the, the visual, they understand the storyline, then they, we take it over into the math problem to just doing the algorithm because you don't get pizzas on a math test. Okay, does that make a little more sense? Yep, it makes total sense. Total sense. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense to them, but I think it also gives them a reason why they need to pay attention. She makes it fun, and the kids love her class. She expects a lot, um, but what she expects from them, she's willing to give that time to make sure that they uh, get what they need from her. I'm always thinking when I teach, it's do for. Then together when they're working with me, it's do with. And at the end, it's cheer on when they're working on their own. This is the do for time. So when I'm showing them on the board, they're listening to me, and it's a think aloud, or I'm talking out loud as I'm working the problem. Okay, now what does that look like in algorithm? What did we start with? Three? Three. Three. And how much did I take off? One, one third. third. And I only could do it if I took off one of my whole pizzas and cut it into how many pieces? Three. Three, Three because look here. This is what's going to tell me how many pieces to cut into, it, into because that's what my mom needed was thirds. I'm going to subtract my numerators. What's three minus one? Two. Keep my denominator. Three. And my whole pizzas? Two. Or whole numbers? Two. Is that the same thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Think you can do it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Then they practice what it is that I've done. Now that's, this is the do with. We do it together. Do you think you can do it without looking at pizzas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, if you run into trouble, I'll put pizzas up. So they have whiteboards, whiteboard markers, and I'll put a problem on the board, and they're working it out on their own, and then they hold up their board. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Look at you guys. Yes, 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 yes. Good job. Yes. I would not be without my whiteboards and whiteboard markers because that gives me the instant feedback whether or not they got it, or if they didn't, I can say, do it again, do it again. And they get that feedback right away. We need a couple more practices in this. What do you think? Yes. yes? Okay. You guys need the pizzas or are we okay without? Without. without. All right.
They're awesome learners. They want to learn. They want to achieve. They want to do well. You ready to do it? Yeah. Yes. yes. Hmm. Without the pizzas? Yes. Just with the algorithm. I have three whole pizzas and a fourth. And mom is really hungry and she wants one and three fourths pizzas. Oh my gosh. And then after I um, teach one section of it, then we'll go back and we'll go back to me doing the do four and I'll teach another part of it. We're ready to try something new? Yes. Same thing. But what happens when we have some pieces on our own left? End of the party. But this time, hmm, how much do I have? Two, 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 one, 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 that's a sixth. Two, two and one sixth. And I get a phone call. Yes, mom? <laughs> you want five sixths of a pizza? Okay, mom, we can do that. Bye, mom. Love you. All right. Anything that's difficult to teach, I would say break it down to the very smallest piece that you can think of and build from there. Make it make sense. So if you can come up with a story or come up with a way that they're going to need to know this. When you don't have enough and you have to borrow pizza, the biggest problem is how many pieces do you cut it into? So what are you going to look at? The bottom. The bottom, which is the denominator. That's going to tell you how many pieces. Are we okay? If you don't have their full attention, every minute that I'm doing some direct instruction, you're losing them. I'm doing the teaching, but they're not necessarily paying attention. You're going to have to totally pay attention. Everything out of your hands. Every single thing out of your hands. You really need to have everything out of their hands and their full attention on you every time you're talking. I've really been stressing that this year, more than I ever have in the past, and um, it's making a difference. All right, so let's look at this. Okay. When you have a subtraction problem with fractions and you need to borrow, add the numerator and the denominator. What's one plus five? Six. That's your new numerator. Oh. Then you can just subtract. What's six minus three? Three. Three, three fifths. Four, my, oops, we had to borrow. Sorry, I forgot borrowing. Three minus one? Two. 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 We still have to borrow. We still have to borrow. Add the numerator and the denominator and that'll be your new numerator. As certain students have finished and it's all correct, I let them help other students. Phoenix, can you help Carter? It helps solidify in their mind what it is that they just learned. <laughs> Good job. Good job. For me, that's very rewarding, is when the students that have been struggling, they get it. And their success makes me want to do even more for them. Hmm. Do we know how to reduce? Yes. What could they both be divided by? Well, so then what really should this be? One third. One third. One whole and one third because two sixths, guess what, is the exact same amount as one third. One third. Yay. Can you believe it? All right. Once they've been taught everything that I'm planning on teaching, then um, we do a more crazy kind of a do with. We have about 10 minutes that I'd like to practice cowboy math with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? So, and I usually put on my cowboy hat. We have our whiteboard markers, are our cap guns, and they have to put it in their pretend holster. And uh, I'll put a problem on the board and I'll say, ready, aim, fire, and then they, they do it really fast. Yes, 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 good. No, try this one again. Try it again. Yes, 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 good, all right, Rudy. So it just becomes a little scenario that we work. It's the same thing, but just a little more fun. It makes me feel great when students, especially students that have been struggling, all of a sudden have success. Now that you explained it with the pizzas, it's easier. Is it easier? The yeah. pizzas? Oh, good, 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 good. That's what I wanted. All right. How about three more? Yeah. 
make it four. Really, really hard. Make it five. Really, really hard. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll try. Okay, here we go. Ready? Aim. Fire. Go. And then when the, we're done with that, that's our final do with, and then I give them independent work. So then they do that on their own. All right, everybody, I'm going to take off my hat. Great. And let's see you all sit nicely. I'm going to give you some independent practice. There are 12 problems of everything that we've done. This is your independent time. You are working by yourself if you need help. Is there anybody that wants to go to the bullpen? Me. Okay, I'll meet you over there. Every year she works on a theme to make her students feel like they're a part of something. And so during the summer she brainstormed this concept of team. So she's taken the time to set her room up in a stadium format and uh, each class that comes through represents a different sport. The bullpen is where you go to get extra practice before you're ready to go into the game to warm up. Okay. What do I do first? Uh, borrow. Why? And then as soon as they got it, all right, go, 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 go. Because I've told them they need that student time, that student only time. Because if it's only done with me and all of a sudden they have a test, they're not going to do well because they haven't practiced on their own. So I've really drilled that into them. And they, they also they'll come up to me and say, can I have extra work over the, home, over the weekend so that I can have ex extra student time so I'm ready for the test? And I think that's awesome. I'm going to wish you. Ready? <laughs> ready? One, two, three. Whoosh! I do so many things to motivate the students. I have a sticker chart along the, the wall that shows any student that has gotten 80% or more on a test. I have kids like hang out at that board and see how many stickers they have and who got stickers on the last test. We also make them a rock star. We'll go, na -na -na -na, like we have an electric guitar. We give them a party. We go, woo woo. We give them a round of applause. We just make a really big deal out of achievement any way we can. And the kids feel good about it. Wow, Carter, give me a high five. Good job. Yes, 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 yes. We have very high expectations, and these kids that come in as average students, they end up leaving at the top of the state. For almost all of you, you're getting every single one of them really quickly. How do you feel? Good. Good. If you had a whole test just of this, how many of you think you would score proficient or advanced? That's my passion. I, there isn't anything I'd rather do than be in education. I love being able to make a difference in kids. It's the best job ever. <laughs> it really is. I can make the difference. I can change these kids' lives. I can make them successful by giving them the skills. And they, not just the skills, the confidence that they can go out and do it, because they can. That's amazing. That's what makes me want to do this, you know? I had a student that came back years later and said that something I had said to him um, changed his life. And it was, you know, you say things all day long, you never know that something that you can say will change someone's life forever. It makes me feel great that it made a difference. And I hope every year that I do a better job and make them stronger. It's not something that you figure out, you keep figuring it out. You keep working on it.